friends, we got a little white comparison video today. We got warm white and we got cool white. And yes, they're different brands, but not taking into account the quality of the paint themselves. The shades are generally same all around the board. Um, these are generally for tinting use. Like if you want to paint something that has warm colors and you don't want to use flat titanium white, then you got warm white and conversely, cool white for cool color paintings. Um, we are going to compare it straight up to a titanium white from Williamsburg. I'm using completely different brands all across the board today. And just so you show just a little bit, I don't know how much difference it's going to make, but we're going to mix everything with a little bit of ultramarine blue, so you can see. And just because we're here, and for the fun of it, we have Chinese Windsor & Newton Titanium White. And I think some of you guys have seen my previous videos about Chinese Windsor & Newton that's oil paint. Uh, pigments are questionable. If this is even titanium white, I don't know. What they use for this pigment, I don't know. They claim, do it have pigment on it? It's in Chinese. Um, they claim probably that it's titanium white, but we'll see. I don't know if it is or isn't. So yes, we are gonna have, this by the way, came in a sample pack. Like every once in a while, those art sites are like, buy X amount of paint and get a sample pack. And Williams and Michael Harding sample packs are really good. Um, yeah, we got a little bit of warm white. We're gonna just, Take a little bit of that, put it on the bed. You can't really see it right off the bat, some impasto. Um, can't really see it right off the bat. It does have a little bit of a yellowish tint. When everything's together, you'll probably see it a little bit more. I'm gonna mix some ultramarine blue. Just a little, oh, yeah, just a little bit. Michael Harding is one of my favorite brands, but I'm slowly Getting into a blue ridge, even though they're a little bit more pricey. It's gonna look just like normal white mixed into it at first. I wasn't sure what color to use to like mix it in, but blue seemed like a good middle ground. And now we're gonna clean off the paint. Gonna just a clean palette knife is a happy palette knife. Gonna get my garbage can out. There we go. Now we're gonna get the cool white. Cool white probably not going to have much of an effect on blue, but I didn't want to mix like a bunch of different colors into this. So we have cool white. Which looks like a white. Yes. We got a little bit of cool white. There you go. You can see it now. You can see it now. The blue versus the yellowish. There you go. We got something out of this. We got a little bit of ultramarine. Just a little bit. I'm trying to go for 50-50. Yeah. See, did I not do 50-50 or is it just... Yeah, that's more or less the same. <laughs> it's a little bit more blue. Cause it tints that way. Okay, one more time with the clean. Clean palette knife, he's a happy palette knife. There we go. Into the garbage it goes. Now we're gonna compare with the good old Williamsburg Titanium White. There we go. If you hear any noises, there's are other people in this household. And yeah, that's a good old middle ground. You can definitely see it. Like that's a yellowish tint, a bluish tint, and good old flat Titanium White. Once it's mixed with another color, it doesn't seem to be that apparent. But I'm sure when you're using it like on a full painting, then you kind of get to see the effects a little bit more. Because once mixed with the blue, it's like a eh, minor difference. But like maybe as an underpainting, if you want to tint the blue and the yellowish. Yeah. Gotta clean this up. And now we're gonna look at Chinese titanium white. See if that does anything at all. I kind of like the Chinese Windsor & Newton. Like if you want to go plain air painting and you're afraid that you're going to lose your paint or if you're traveling, just pack some of these cheap Wish. Uh, you can get them on Wish. Chinese Windsor & Newton. 
And yeah, the pigments are all wrong, but they're cheap. So if you lose them, it's not the end of the world. Ooh. Well, oh, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, that speaks to the quality. Look at that. That looks like an egg. Like that has so much yolk in it. Wow, that is okay. Okay. That's more that's that's more liquid than paint, but okay. Good job, Chinese Windsor and Newton. Chinese Windsor and Newton is not related to actual Windsor and Newton, just so we're making that clear. There are a China, I think, has this law. Don't quote me on this. I could be wrong. China has this law where you can only have things that are made in China to the Chinese population. Um, like, you need special permission. So I think they just license it out, the name. Wow, that doesn't do anything. That doesn't do anything. Do I need more white to tint this? Ah, I guess once you get the initial oil out, it's not, not as, as terrible. Is that going to do anything? Is that going to do... A little bit. It's getting there. It's getting there. It got there eventually. You just have to use twice as much. So yeah, little video. We got warm white on top, cool white, flat titanium white, and the Chinese knockoff. Um, they don't seem to do much in general tinting with at least ultramarine blue. They probably work better with a lot more more subtle colors. Um, but yeah, they're good for underpainting, and apparently Michael Harding is pretty good at impasto. I did not know that, because I usually paint things very flat. But yeah, don't use the Chinese Windsor and Newton, unless you want, don't care about carrying cheap paints around, and maybe you'll lose them. But yeah, thank you guys. Uh, have a good day. I'll be back in a week with more weird painting videos. Thank you. Goodbye.